Hey guys, I'm really excited to finally make this video showing off one of my absolutely favorite scripts in After Effects, Reach. Reach really is one of those tools that after you start using it, you're gonna wonder how you ever used After Effects without it. It has over 100 utilities and expressions built into it. So instead of going over everything, I'm gonna show you some of my particular favorite features in Reach. And recompose. Have you ever run into this issue? You know, I find it easier to lay out motion graphics and uh, even some like VFX things or, you know, any of our corporate uh, video stuff in Premiere and then send it through dynamic link to After Effects. But if we do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit replace with After Effects composition. You'll see that all of the text comes in pre-composed. So if we want to get one of these out, we have to double click here, copy and paste this one and it's just kind of a lot of work and so what we can do is select all of these and go over to reach and select unprecompose and it will unprecompose all of those layers you can use this for any time things are precomposed but especially dynamic link i've found this really useful for my text layers and now i could just animate all of this text Crap and precompose a layer and speaking of unprecomposing what about precomposing if I select these logos and go to layer precompose, our only option is to move them into a new composition with the same dimensions as the comp they came from. So we have all this dead space now and we would have to change the composition size or we could trim the size of this by selecting a region of interest and then cropping to the region of interest. But you know, that's a lot of work that I don't wanna have to do. So if we undo this, we can come in here and go to crop and precompose and that will crop this and precompose them exactly to the dimensions of the two elements. Anchor point mover. There's also a built-in anchor point mover. Now, there's lots of scripts out there that have this, but it's really nice that it's bundled into reach. So, if I want to make the anchor point top left or left middle, wherever I want it, I can set it here with this and it's just nice and easy to access that it's bundled into reach. Grid. You can also distribute layers on a grid. Let me show you how that works. So I have uh, 25 different Adobe logos here, and I'm going to come to this uh, grid icon, and I'm going to click it, and I'm going to tell it I want it to space uh, 300 and five and five. So five columns, five rows, uh, 300 pixels apart, and create grid. And now it creates the grid, and you have this controller here. And if you know how much time it takes to set this up with the align tool, uh, you'll know what a big time saving this is. And there's other shapes too. You can do uh, a square or a triangle. So now we'll go into a uh, circle and let's try similar 300 and create grid. Um, and you know, maybe we would need to use less, but you know how cool uh, that this works. And I could maybe just scale this down a little bit. Um, so there's your circle, and uh, let's try triangle as well. Um, here's triangle one, and I'm going to create a grid. And here's triangle two. So it looks like we probably need a few more icons uh, to create these patterns, but you know, stuff like this takes so long to set up uh, manually, and so uh, it's such a cool little tool that's just built in over here. Graph editor curves. Are you too lazy to go into the graph editor? I am a lot of times as well. One of my favorite built-in features are these preset curves for your keyframes. So let me drop in a couple keyframes here and I'm going to make this really big at the beginning and come about 10 frames. Okay. So here you can see there's no easing. And if I easy ease these, um, you know, that's a, that's a start. If I bring up my graph editor, uh, you can see that the properties are eased a little bit. But it feels very generic so um you know we have a couple different presets here this is one of my favorite ones and if i click this you can see what what happens here um it gets off to a really quick start and then really eases into this final keyframe um so this is kind of a a nice animation but i can grab these keyframes again and we can see what some of these different ones do and you can cycle through and without having to uh, grab these curve handles. Um, it lets us try a lot of different uh, options. So this is kind of the opposite um, of that. 
And, uh, you know, if we had another keyframe here, you know, we could use some of these different ones to, uh, you know, give us some different looks. So something nice to play around with and a little bit quicker than having to come in here into the graph editor and change the curves. Empty memory and disk cache. Another feature that I love of Reach, instead of having to come here and edit and purge all memory and disk cache, there is a little icon up here that you can click real quick and then hit OK, and boom, you're purged. Unboop shape layers. If you do animation with shape layers, you know how frustrating it is to have artwork like this that you need to separate and you need to go in here and like, you know, duplicate this and then, you know, solo like these different groups uh, so that you can animate the different parts of the logo. But there's an easier way with reach, which is that you can select this and you can go to uh, ungroup shape layers. And if I click this, it's going to separate all those groups into different shape layers. And if I give it a second here, I'm gonna now be able to animate all of these pieces individually. And here it is now you see that each one of these uh, shape layers is separated. So gonna be a lot easier to animate. And speaking of ungrouping layers, we can also group all of these shape layers uh, for this icon here. Um, if I select these and then I come over here and shift group, it will now put those all into one shape layer. You can also see it keeps all of these original artwork layers. It just turns them off and hidden. So this is our original Pixel Planet icon logo. And it's nice so that it's a little non-destructive. You have that option to go back and reference it if you need it. Bake expressions. Another really cool feature that's built in is called Bake Expressions. Now, you know I love expressions, but they can be sometimes bulky as After Effects has to you know, compute a certain parameter for every frame. And so let's do a really easy expression right here. I'm gonna go into the rotation property and I'm going to type uh, time times 500, okay? So you see that makes our icon uh, rotate around here. And let's say this is great. Let's say we adjust this maybe and we want it to go a little slower. So we go to 200 and we go, okay, you know, that's looks like it's working pretty well, okay? So we can click here on the rotation and we can come over here and we can bake expression. And so now this will disable the expression and it will drop keyframes. So those keyframes are gonna keep uh, this rotation going. But let's say I wanna change this to time times 100, okay? We can click in here on this parameter and we can shift click to unbake it. So take away all of those keyframes and now we can change this to time times 100 and of course we can rebake it again so this is just a, a really cool way to potentially speed up your renders if the expressions don't need to be calculated anymore create guides and this is one i use every once in a while so you can select one of these layers and you can create guides around here let me turn off this background so it's a little bit easier to see. So you see it automatically created guides all around this layer. And you could want that for a number of reasons, but you know, aligning things now uh, to this layer becomes a little easier. Shape layers. Okay, let me show you a couple of cool things you can do with shape layers. So first off, if I select this shape, we can come to this button and this will flip flop the fill and stroke. I've definitely had to do that before in my workflow. If I shift click this, it will alternate which one you have. So if you have it set to stroke only and you want it to fill, uh, you can shift click this and that may be a nice option to have as well. Another thing you might run into is needing to uh, convert a lot of objects to a certain color at once. And so you can click this icon to select a color. And so let's select this dark blue right here. And you'll see now that blue shows up here. And so now we have that color handy. So if I draw you know, a new shape here and give it a, a fill of a different color. You can see that if I just click this icon, it will automatically set the fill to that color. And here's another thing you can do. You know, if you select this layer and have to drill down and change it to a round cap, that can be a lot of clicks. But there's a quick button right here that will convert everything to uh, round caps. And if I shift click this, it sets everything back to a butt cap. 
and an alt sets it to a bevel cap. Randomize layer position. Okay, so here I have our icon scaling up and I'm going to duplicate this a bunch of times and then I'm going to select all of these. So I have 30 instances and I'm going to search position and I'm going to look for this utility here called randomized layer position. And if I double click this, you see it really gave us a nice randomness. Like they're, they're not equally distributed. Um, it is very random. And this might be a good starting point for what I want to do. Maybe I'll space a few of these out just so they're not overlapping. Um, but I do really appreciate the randomness uh, of this pattern. And then I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to go to this randomly distribute layer and I'm going to select random and let's uh, do shift, we'll type in 30 and let's try that. Uh, looks like it, that's too much. So let me reset these back to the beginning and type in 10. Yeah, we definitely want more overlapping. So I'm going to push these all back to the beginning again and shift, let me type in two. And I'll go ahead and watch this. You know, this gives us a nice option. You know, if we had to manually push all of the positions of these and drag all of these out randomly, you know, it would have taken a lot more time. And some of these tools can allow us to really quickly uh, create something like this. Organize project folders. Now, personally, this has never happened to me because I always organize my projects. You can't lie on YouTube. Okay, we've all been there where you start dragging a couple assets in and before you know it, your project is unorganized like this one. But there's this really cool utility. So if you search uh, organize and you double click it and run it, it will organize everything in your project. So it put the composition into the compositions folder, audio, footage, images, and vectors all nice and neatly organized. Bookmarks. And speaking of that utility to organize your project, there are so many cool utilities built in here. So if I click this button, it will show you all of the utilities. I recommend looking through these. There's some really neat things here we weren't able to cover. And so for example, this organize uh, structure uh, project folders, if I select this and I come up here to the star, it will add it to the bookmarks. And then you can click this bookmarks button and it will easily show you all the things that you've bookmarked. These are some of my favorites. And now it might be a little easier to find it. Click the link in the description to check out Reach for yourself. I've been using this for over two years since it was in beta and I honestly can't really use After Effects without it anymore. After I told Frederick of Pencil Park that we were making this video, he was kind enough to offer us an affiliate link. But in addition to supporting us, Frederick is an amazing resource in the motion graphics community. So your support to his endeavors couldn't be going to a better place. He has packed so much into this tool and keeps adding more to it, so it would be impossible to cover it all. But I'd love to hear from you what some of your favorite features of Reach are. Drop a comment below. If you like being more efficient in After Effects so that you can focus on the creative, we have lots of tools and tutorials on this channel that will help you get there. And make sure to like and subscribe so we can keep making these videos.